finally happened. Full winter kit, just on my way to Newcastle to meet a guy called Matt. Matt, you moved here two months ago. Welcome to the north. I won't need a shower. Ordered that in February this year. Arrived this morning. The joys of COVID. Seeking refuge because it's freezing cold. My gloves are on the uh, fence. And they were on the fire, which is at the moment 220 degrees. I might have melted my gloves. Only a little bit. It's like rare. Put your hand on there as well. It's not that hot. <laughs> it's 220 <laughs> degrees. What do you mean it's not that hot? You don't like get as fast up hills as me without eating properly, you know I mean, like fuel. Sort out the warmth out the bike shop, but I burnt my glove by putting it on the fire. Who would have thought fires are hot? So in an aid to extend the dry miles a little bit longer, clinging on to the good weather, me and Jimmy thought it'd be a good idea to go bikepacking somewhere fairly close. Thinking about flying to Spain next week. So there's direct flights from here, Newcastle, over to Barcelona, and doing a ride down the coast to either Malaga or Alicante. Two cities which also have direct flights back to here. It is going to require a little bit of planning on my part and uh, some Jimmy friendly days because he hasn't been on a bike very much recently. He has about a week to get fit, which isn't going to happen. So it's more just conditioning, do rides every day and try and get his legs used to it. Best case, he gets into shape. Worst case, it makes for some funny videos. So it's a win-win. this i should have learned by now this happens all the time in the northeast morning cloudy weather rain afternoon sunny and nice this is my route to the shops and why i love living here not too bad really is it i was reading a couple of really nice comments on yesterday's video one was saying really appreciate the effort on the daily uploads I'm one of the only cycling content creators to be doing that i'm actually not uploading daily but i guess it's close to it i do take little breaks every now and then daily is doable but absolutely life destroying and probably best saved for when something really interesting is happening like a bike packing trip and you can just smash out 30 videos in a row that's where it's best used another guy was saying he's come to the conclusion that i am an insomniac quite muddy yeah Woo. in order to edit and produce this many videos how do i get any sleep and i think i can actually explain a few methods that i use in order to be able to do it firstly i've massively reduced the amount of distractions that i have in my life so this is hypocritical because i kind of work in social media but I try and stay off it as much as possible to the point where I've turned off all the notifications on my phone except for WhatsApp and texts. And all of my social media apps are in a folder on the third page of my screen, which reminds me when my brain goes, oh, you should probably just press that Instagram one. It's not there anymore. I made those changes about a year ago and 100% they work. I end up using social media less. My efficiency has gone up and I've been making more videos than ever, but having way more energy to spend on other stuff in life, which is what it's about, really. The weird thing is, though, how mad is this? My brain has turned YouTube and the comment section of these videos into a social media addiction. It's like the human brain, or, or my brain at least, is always searching for that kind of social group of people you can look at and see what's going on. And, and the comment section of these videos kind of starts becoming that sometimes. Weird. Put those apps in a hard to get place. Your life will improve. The second thing is that I have all of my stuff, whether it's bikes, cameras, kit, meticulously organized. In here, I know where absolutely everything is whenever I need it. Most commonly used tools are all up there on the wall. Stuff that needs charging is always on, charged and ready to go. Tripods up on the wall, easy to see and identify. Shoe dryer, always ready for when I come back from a nasty ride and my shoes are wet. Spare wheels and bike packing gear, always out on display ready so I don't have to rummage through drawers. Any type of bike grease, lubricant and PVA glue that you could ever need. And all the little bits that I would previously have lost inside a drawer are out ready and easy to see. Inner tubes, organized by type, tires, 
organized by type. Right next to my bike storage, there is always a little tray of stuff with an octopusy looking charger. Bike lights go in here, get charged, and then they're allowed in this box. A collection of items that you might need just before a ride is in this box, along with sunglasses, bar bags and shoes. Different size bags for traveling, carrying stuff in, always on hooks, ready to go. Camera gear always on display, categorized, and most of it is labeled so I know where to put stuff back. I haven't used that in a while. What I think all of this points to is how important organization and focus really is. I'm not the fastest at editing video. I'm not the best at shooting it. I'm certainly not the best at talking to a camera. I give myself loads more work than I have to by stumbling over my words and having to refilm stuff and not getting the message across that I want to. But whatever line of work that you're in, whatever you're trying to create, whatever you're trying to produce. Organizing stuff properly and avoiding distractions has been the most beneficial thing for me personally. So thank you for those lovely comments. I really do appreciate it, but I'm not an insomniac. My watch tells me that I sleep pretty well. 